So E3 is coming gone, but that doesn't mean that we don't have more information regarding games such as Final Fantasy VII Remake. So, post E3, the producer Yoshinori Kitase has published a message for everybody to get some more information regarding the remake. So let's go ahead and take a look at this because any information for me is good information. So maybe this can kind of help with a lot of concerns that people have regarding how how far into the story are we going and things like that. So let's go ahead and read this. Uh, this article is coming to us from Gematsu. So let, let's take a look at this. Final Fantasy VII Remake producer Yoshinori Kitase has provided more insight into the game's development and scope in a blog post following E3 2019 where the game was on major display. Here is the full post, which I do want to let you guys know, if you're not aware, there was a demo for Final Fantasy VII Remake at E3. Hopefully we get a demo ourselves. Uh... You know, before the game releases, I, I really want one <laughs> so I can play it nonstop. Uh, anyways, while the development team finish the first game in the project, we are continuing to plan and outline the overall volume of content for the second. Due to the work already done on the first game, we anticipate development of the second game to be more efficient. Well, that's good news. We have our own internal schedule and plan, but for now, we'd like to focus our information on the first game in the project. The key creative values of the core Final Fantasy series are innovation, pushing boundaries, and surprising players. This project shares these same values, and the development team view it as the next mainline Final Fantasy release, which is a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Uh, you know, they're treating it like a brand new game, which I'm okay with. I'm 100% okay with. Uh, for the core, uh, for the original core members of the development team, simply recreating the, the original game with improved graphics wasn't enough to get us invested and excited about remaking Final Fantasy VII. To return, we want to go beyond the original, telling a deeper story and providing a, ma a modern gaming experience. We really want to go above and beyond what is expected of a remake. Again, I'm, I'm really okay with that. That is a, that's awesome. But you're not really telling us anything we don't, didn't already know. Uh, as well as some of the core members of the original development team, we also have dedicated in-house team of international gaming talent. Many of our new team members were young fans who played the original uh, 7 when it first released. That's always good. When you when you bring in fans of the game uh, to work on the project, a lot of times it, it uh, turns out really good uh, because you're bringing in fans as opposed to just bringing some outside developers to just work on the game. Now, that is to say that there's a lot of fans out there. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it's probably not hard to find fans of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it's very exciting and exhilarating work with this talented team on such an, ambigu um, an ambitious project. The first game of the project takes place in the elect electric city of Midgar. We chose to focus on Midgar as it best represents the world of Seven as a location more than any other. Midgar is full of imagination with myriad influences and surprises around every corner. While many people think that Midgar is very is very dark at first glance, we have a design aesthetic where the city has strong elements of color and variety. The lighting and coloring we are using throughout Midgar accentuate what is unique about Final Fantasy VII's world. We decided not to use a photorealistic approach with the design, but instead something more stylized, honoring the artistic designs and choices of the original. A lot has changed since the release of Final Fantasy VII. Well, let me, let me back up really quick. So, they, uh, who was it? Um, Jason Schreier from Kotaku did an interview um, with the director. I, th I think it was the director of Final Fantasy VII Remake. And they confirmed that Midgar is 100% the first game of the series. Um, I was hoping that it wasn't. I hope I was hoping that it would end with the death of Aerith, but I guess not. So I'm kind of wondering how they're going to change things to accommodate for the whole story of Midgar. And um, I don't know. Maybe we'll like. Maybe they'll change the story and and have like the introduction and first fight with Sephiroth be the final fight of the first game I I don't know it's kind of it's kind of an odd decision that they made in this but I like we all know that they're changing the story a bit to accommodate for the extra time in the game or in the section of the game to basically 
expand upon the universe, which I'm again, I'm okay with. That doesn't bother me at all. All right, so back then we didn't have access to things like voice acting, performance, and motion capture. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I went to sleep at like five o'clock in the morning, so I'm sorry I'm yawning so much. Or close up cameras outside of cutscenes. For Final Fantasy VII Remake, there's a greater emphasis on character storytelling uh, through the use of these techniques as well as some other new tech. This allows us to make these characters more expressive than ever, enhancing the levels of immersion and enjoying and enjoyment through performance, which is great. I mean, like the fact that we have motion capture these days, the fact that we can bring Thanos to life and the Hulk to life and it looks really good. I, I mean, they can do stuff like that with video games these days, too. Um, in the remake, we are giving voice to the original Final Fantasy VII for the first time. No, you're not. By bringing in a new generation of actors, we hope to provide the best experience for original fans and new players. Um, we had voice acting in Advent Children, Crisis Core, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, you know, it, it's not the first time that there's voice acting to the original Final Fantasy VII, but, or, you know, to the characters. Um, but, I mean, they're not wrong when it says original Final Fantasy VII, because obviously in the original Final Fantasy VII, there were no voice actors. For gameplay, we are aiming to create a new take on classic concepts with an accessible evolution of the active time battle system, giving you greater action with tactical control, which we saw in the E3 demo showcase, which was actually really cool. Like, I really enjoyed that. I really did. Uh, the system we created retains the strategic decisions of, multi of controlling multiple party members, allowing you to select from a wide range of abilities and spells. You can control your favorite character while issuing orders to others or leave them to AI and choose when to switch to a different party member to make best use of their unique abilities in battle. This allows all players to choose and enjoy your favorite way of playing, which is great. I really enjoyed the way the combat system looked in the game, um, and I can't wait to be able to play it. I have a feeling I'm going to be playing as Tifa a lot just because I like the way that she fights um, with the whole hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat uh, style that she has. Finally, yes, we will still have materia. You can use it to tailor your playstyle and abilities. We'll go into greater detail on lots more gameplay elements as we get closer to the release next year. For now, I hope you are all excited for what we reveal at E3, and we look forward to sharing more news and updates with you across the year ahead. Final Fantasy VII Remake is due out for PlayStation 4 on March 3rd, 2020. Um, I, I Honestly, I'm, I'm super excited for this game. I like the way the combat was. I like the active time battle system that they implemented into it. Um, I liked everything that we saw in the game. I, I really did. I have no complaints at all, um, which is surprising. It's surprising because I, I was, you know, I was here thinking that um, there might be some things that might bother me. Maybe Tifa's design, maybe like nothing. Nothing bothers me about this game, and I'm super excited for it. The combat looks great. The character models look great. Um, you know, Tifa's character model looks great i'm glad that they kept her original uh costume or you know her original outfit and all that stuff um people say yeah they you know they nerfed her chest area a little bit no they didn't she's actually wearing like two sports bras which uh, many women with large you know breasts would be would tell you that they flatten out when you're wearing two sports bras and stuff like that so uh it doesn't really bother me like I, i'm i'm excited for this game i want it like now i want it now give me a demo so that way i can enjoy the demo over and over and over until the game releases uh because that's what i did with final fantasy 8 when it came out on the ps1 i had the demo i played the demo non-stop until final fantasy 8 came out so yeah g give me give me the demo for this game so that way i can do that um you know reading this article there's nothing really that uh that concerns me I'm, I'm i'm actually really happy with everything on here i'm happy with the way that they're handling final fantasy 7 i guess you know the only concern i have is that we don't know how many games it's going to be at this point because um i was th originally thinking that they would end with the death of Aerith, and uh and then the second game would basically have the weapons and have everything else moving forward but i guess not um so at this point probably looking at like three or four games man because um, even in the original Final Fantasy VII, Disc 1, Midgar was only like half of Disc 1. You had like Cosmo Canyon, you had um, you had uh, Yuffie's hometown, you had like everything in the first game. Um, so this first game looks like it's only going to be Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, and Aerith. 
Uh, I don't see Yuffie coming in here if we're not leaving Midgar. Red 13, maybe they might change the story to have Red 13. Because uh, I know that in, in the original Final Fantasy VII, we leave Midgar, come back, and that's when we encounter Red 13. Um, so maybe we will maybe they'll change the story so we have red 13 before we finish the game uh so we can round it out with five characters i don't know yet it's kind of it's kind of up in the air until we get there because i know sid we won't encounter sid probably until the second game um probably for sure vincent unless they're going to put uh shinra mansion within the confounds of midgar but i doubt it uh, but if they did then maybe we'll see vincent in the first game i i don't think so though and then kate sith is or no kate she uh is how they're how they're gonna be pronouncing it because i think that's how the japanese version is like kate she or something like that um whatever the case may be whoever the characters are it'll be interesting moving forward as we get more information out as to which characters are going to be in the first game and which ones are not um i guess we'll find out you know within the next few months because we do have the playstation experience or whatever sony experience uh later on this year and so more information will probably drop by then and until then guys stick around we'll be covering more information as more information comes through hit the like button subscribe if you guys are new i'll catch you all in the next video thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it you guys fantastic peace out guys